Have you ever wanted to, you know, really take the wheel when it comes to your internet connection? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to demystify the HTTP Injector app, walking through a really popular tutorial step-by-step -step to show you how you can build your very own custom, secure tunnel to the web. So first off, what is HTTP Injector? Honestly, the best way to think about it is like a powerful toolkit. It's an app that lets you build your own personalized, secure path to the internet. It's kind of like a custom VPN, but you're the one calling all the shots. All right, first things first, we have to choose our foundation, which the app calls the tunnel type. And this is a big deal, probably the most important choice you'll make right at the start, because it basically defines how your entire connection is going to be built. As you can see, you've got a few options here. And yeah, the tutorial points out some of the newer ones like V2Ray and Hysteria, but it strongly recommends sticking with SSH. And why is that? Well, it's just the most popular and flexible of the bunch, giving you a few different ways to connect. So for this explainer, we're definitely going to stick with SSH. So to keep things simple and, more importantly, reliable, we're locking in our choice. We're going with an SSH tunnel, and we're going to pair that with a direct connection. The source material pretty much says this is the most popular and stable setup, which makes it the perfect starting point for us. Okay, next up, we need to build the engine for our connection. It's called the payload. Now, don't let that technical name throw you off. It's really just a set of instructions. That's it. We're basically just telling the server exactly how we want it to handle our connection request. And making that payload is just a simple four-step process. First, we set the payload type to direct. Easy enough. Second, we pick the get request method. That's just the standard way of asking a server to send us stuff. Third, we pop in our host address. And then finally, and this part is really important, we select three specific extra headers. And these three little checkboxes, they are, according to the tutorial, totally non-negotiable if you want a reliable setup. Online host tells the app to just keep trying if the connection drops. Keep alive is basically you yelling at the server, hey, I'm still here, don't hang up on me. And user agent just lets the server know what kind of device you're on. Put them all together and you get a way more stable connection. Okay, so our engine is built. Now, where are we taking this thing? We need a destination, right? We need a server. And the tutorial shows us that there are two main ways we can go about this. And here it is, the classic trade-off. Control versus convenience. You can do a manual setup for what's likely going to be better performance, but that means you have to go get your own account details. Or you can just use the pre-built servers right inside the app. It's way faster and easier, though you might have to watch a quick ad. But let's say you do go the convenient route and pick a pre-built server. The tutorial really emphasizes that there is one single number, one metric that you should pay attention to more than anything else. What do you think that is? It's all about latency. You've probably heard that term before. All it means is the server's response time, that little delay before your data actually starts moving. To put it really simply, low latency equals a fast, snappy connection. And the rule is always, always, lower is better. And here's what that actually looks like. The app will often color code these servers for you, which is super helpful. The tutorial is crystal clear. You want to aim for the green ones. A server with, say, 60 milliseconds of latency is going to feel lightning fast compared to one that's sitting up at 350. That difference is something you can really feel. All right, it's time for the final step. Let's see how this all comes together when we actually hit that start button. It's time for the launch sequence. Now, the tutorial is really honest about this part. Things don't always work perfectly on the first click. It is completely normal for that first connection attempt to fail. So if it happens, don't get discouraged. You might even see this exact message pop up in the connection log, premature connection close. It's just a fancy technical way of saying the server hung up on you. But don't worry. Because remember those three little extra header boxes we checked earlier? Well, this is where they become our heroes. Thanks to settings like online host and keep alive, the app is built to automatically try again. It just goes right into what the source calls a reconnection mode. And after just a second or two, you get the payoff. The log flashes this beautiful message. SSL handshake was successful. That's it. That's the digital agreement between your phone and the server, creating that secure encrypted link. Your tunnel is officially active. You are connected. So we've gone all the way from the foundation to the engine to a successful launch. The real takeaway here isn't just a config file. It's a much deeper understanding of how these connections actually work. And that leads me to one last question for you. Now that you know how to build a connection like this, what does this level of network control truly enable? 